So if you have not drained the oil, now would be a good time to do so. So these uh, crank pulleys are not keyed. There is no woodruff key on them. Um, and I didn't talk about before, hence why there's no timing marks on these. Once you get into the cover, obviously there's gonna be marks, there's gonna be everything there that's needed. At this point, you pull the engine mount. Um, once I pull the engine mount, I'm gonna switch gears. We're gonna take these valve covers off because the valve covers do need to come off to get the timing cover out. All right guys, so we went ahead and uh, we pulled the front cover off as part of the procedure, obviously, to replace the timing chain components. Now, you are gonna have to run the crankshaft bolt back in. Um, there is a service procedure. I don't want you to just watch this video and just copy how I do it because some of them are configured a little bit differently, but that being said, you are going to need the camshaft holding tool, which I'm going to show you in a minute. Uh, but basically, you're going to turn this over until your marks are both vertical with each cylinder head. <clears throat> and then you're going to install your holding tool on the left hand um, camshaft. Excuse me, this one. This is a 2014 Taurus. SHO EcoBoost 3.5 VIN T. And I say VIN T because it is a different, different timing chain kit for the other VIN digit, which I can't, I think it's a VIN 8. It is different. So make sure that you do your homework and you check and make sure you have the appropriate timing chain kit. Now, Lyle makes this kit. You know what? I'll show you the, uh, the part number here. Lyle makes uh, this camshaft holding kit. This works on the 3.5 and 3.7 liter Ford engines. So, very, very simple. What you're gonna do is uh, you're going to work this down onto the cam flat. It works on both sides here, okay? Just like such. And what that's gonna do, <clears throat> it's gonna hold each cylinder head camshaft assembly at TDC. That being said, as you can see here, this is covered completely over each phaser. So you're gonna to have to remove these assemblies in order to service the timing chain. So the next step that we're gonna do is we're gonna remove these. We're gonna get them out of the way to expose our timing chain components. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna remove these three bolts on each 
the variable cam solenoid brackets. Now here's the thing, power tools are okay coming out. Absolutely make sure they're on reverse. Not okay for going back in. We're gonna get into pulling these off and we're gonna place them down in a clean area. Like to loosen them all first. So make sure you hold this when you loosen them all. You do not want it falling, slamming into something. Okay, so what I do, pull all three bolts out. They're all, as you can see, the same length. You're gonna wiggle a little bit. You're gonna pull them off. So this is what that looks like, okay? It's gonna spill oil. That's why we got pig mat on the floor. Put some pressure. Now we're gonna do the same thing. Wiggle a little bit. Now you don't need to start going all crazy cleaning oil, you're gonna spill more, so don't even worry about it. Now, I'm not even really gonna get into the procedure of marking the timing chain because here's why. If you're taking the timing chain primary or secondaries off, get a new one, um, end of story. Don't put them back on, okay? If they're recently replaced, you need to mark two teeth on each index mark, including the crankshaft. Now we have a close kit for this that we're replacing. We're doing the water pump as well, which we'll get into, but it already comes with marking with gold colored two teeth where each one lines up. So we don't even need to worry about that. Now, for those of you that may be putting on a, a chain back on, follow the service procedure, make sure you're marking the chain. So that's all I'll say about that. Now, next thing is what you're gonna do is you're gonna find your primary timing chain tensioner, which lives right here, okay? It's got a big guide. It's got two bolts, again, eight mils. What we're gonna do is we're gonna remove this tensioner. We have a new one. We don't need to worry about saving it or whatever else. So we're gonna go ahead and remove it. You're gonna see some oil come out with it, which is totally normal. I'm gonna pull these bolts because I am going to reuse these bolts. There's one, two, don't let stuff start frailing around. Now for the sake of absorbing oil, I'm gonna set it on my pig mat below me here. Next step, our guide is now, as you can see, free floating, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna pull our guide off all the way, which can sometimes be difficult, but there's no tension on the chain, so. You're gonna see slack here, it's completely normal. Now, if you buy a clothes kit, again, it's gonna have a new guide. Now, if we look at this one, okay, it's normal to see some light scoring, okay? This one right here is in very good condition, okay? It's not deeply grooved. We don't have a, a massive channel where the chain has been running. It's hard to see on the video, but it is fairly flat. It is in good condition. Now, when you see where the chain was rubbing and it's lower than the actual plane of the guide, throw it away and get yourself a new one. Now, we have uh, more guides. We'll get into all that. Now, what we're gonna do next is we're gonna actually start to take the chain off. Now, the guide on this side, you have two eight mil bolts. These bolts, you're going to have to save as well. Now, the good news, well, we're gonna need that washer though. If I can get it. No, it might be made, made into that. All right, so we're gonna pull this off. 
easier said than done. Remove the bolts all the way, how about that? Now, if you see this one, it's kind of stuck in there a little bit. This one absolutely has some wear to it. Now you need to keep something in mind here, okay? Two different size bolts. The long one goes in the bottom, the short one goes in the top, okay? This is where you gotta pay attention. Obviously, I would hope you would figure that out when you go to put it back together. Not everyone does. All right, so this chain we are replacing. We're gonna go ahead, completely remove it. So our primary chain, as it's called, is now removed. We need to absolutely make sure that the crankshaft does not move. If it does slightly, that is why you mark the chain because these are not going to be moving. This down here can move, which definitely can affect it. We will now start um, removing the phasers themselves, which is this guy right here. Not a good idea to uh, use an impact on these. So instead, a long ratchet. And the only reason that I say that is because all of the torsional vibration makes it way harder to keep these on here. So now that they're loose, obviously we can run them off with a tool, a power tool. Now this again. And these are, I mean, torqued, torqued guys. They are not easy to get off. But what I do is I lean on the um, hold, holding tool, make sure it doesn't hop off. It's already trying. <sighs> All right, Woo. I'm gonna run these out. Okay, there's one. There's two. Okay, now these bolts, again, replace them. If you're not, guys, for one, make sure they go back into their same home. And for two, clean them thoroughly. And I would probably recommend some Loctite. And now you see why we have all this pig mat on the ground, because these are gonna drain. Okay, now the tensioner you can leave there. Um, if you're going back on, I would keep the chains where they're at. Now, one thing you'll notice, and I'm going to show you guys here in the camera, okay, these have little um, extrusions in them, almost like a woodruff key, and they're going to sit in the exact same spot when they go back on. So, you don't really got to worry about them turning like this. But if you're gonna use the same chain, you're gonna wanna mark them so you know they're going back on correctly. Now this tensioner I can basically throw away. I am replacing this, so I'm not too concerned about it. I know it's kind of overkill using this Milwaukee, but it's what I have in my hand, readily available. Make sure this moves. Pull this way a little bit this way a little bit and then when i get them to the point where they're almost off sneak this tensioner out let it rest okay same thing set it somewhere clean now obviously you're going to remove these guys grab it pull this off pretty self-explanatory how they go on you guys this is uh this timing job is a fairly straightforward job. You know, it, it looks like it's, uh, it, it can look intimidating, but the hardest part about this whole job is dropping this cradle out. So that's probably what I'll say about that.